Hey folks, it's that time again. It is time for another edition of Getting to Know Dynatrace. I'll be your host today. My name is David Jones. Everyone calls me Jonesy. And uh, we'll be walking through uh, a whole bunch of stuff around Dynatrace. Today, as our uh, guest sales engineer, we have uh, Ricardo Rea. Hey, Ricardo, how you doing? Hey, Jonesy. Pretty good. Very happy to be here. How are you? Oh, it's, uh, I'm doing great, and uh, it's great to have you here. So, so Ricardo, uh, he, you know, he works with our, our team in South America, LATAM, and uh, we're really excited to have you here, Ricardo. So, folks, if you're new to getting to know Dynatrace, we usually start off with a couple of segments, and let me just get my screen shared here, and uh, hopefully we can see my screen. Ricardo, can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see it. That's all right. Perfect. So, you know, with getting to know Dynatrace, uh, we, we, we typically start off with a couple of segments before we get into the demonstration. And when we do get into the demonstration, what makes getting to know Dynatrace, what makes it so, so if you're watching us, wherever you're coming in from, uh, please feel free to ask questions, type those questions into the chat window, whether or not you're using LinkedIn or if you're using uh, Twitter or Twitch or Facebook or whatever, however, just feel free to type in a question into the chat and we'll do our very best to get those questions answered. So let's get started with the first segment, which is what's new. Now, as always, with getting to know Dynatrace, uh, the, uh, the easiest place to find out what's new and what's going on at Dynatrace is to go to the Dynatrace blog. So the Dynatrace blog, uh, you know, we've got lots of great content that we've updated since the last time that we've chatted with you. Uh, we're, uh, you know, got some release notes here about the new update to Dynatrace Managed. You can see that Dynatrace Managed or the on-premise version of Dynatrace has been updated to uh, uh, version 1254. Uh, a lot of really exciting new capabilities and features. In addition to that, there's even more content around how you can use Grail, which is this new underlying storage mechanism that's part of the Dynatrace platform, how you can use Grail to enhance your business analytics and business events. So I, I, I invite you to have a look at that. And then there's other things. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna flip over into the blog for a second here. And uh, you can see here that there's a, um, you know, Adam Gardner, he actually added a new article on enhanced root cause analysis for events. Now, you know, without going in and stealing any of, uh, you know, Ricardo's thunder when he does his demo, if you're not familiar with Dynatrace, one of the things that Dynatrace does really, really, really well is it provides an automated root cause analysis. Now, that root cause analysis capability been updated to take into account events that we might be seeing. And so if you, you know, give this an, you know, give this article a read, it goes into the detail about, you know, uh, giving better explanations as to what went wrong, who the issue is impacting, how does the organization begin triaging and fixing the issue, who needs to be alerted, um, you know, who's responsible for this issue. And now that we have better visibility into events, we can actually uh, add that information into those problem cards that Dynatrace generates when there's a problem. So this is a really interesting article. And you can see here that he provides a bunch of examples, talks about this uh, improved root cause analysis, shows what these events look like. For example, this here is an example of a deployment event. 
and you can see we're tracking things like uh, you know the version of this particular deployment, the CIs that might be associated with it, remediation, who approves it, who escalates things, what's the ticket number. So there's all sorts of information that we can pull in from these events. And then our Davis AI engine will analyze those events and see if they're in fact actually related to that particular problem. So this is, you know, this is definitely interesting stuff and I invite you to give this a read. So let's get back to our presentation here and let's head on to the next segment, which is, did you know? So every week or every couple of weeks when we do getting to know Dynatrace, I always like to bring a uh, new tidbit of information that you may not be aware of with Dynatrace. And so that's the whole purpose of did you know? And let's, let's go with what's, what didn't we know? And, uh, you know, last week that we now know this week because of this, and that is, hey, did you know that Dynatrace does release management? Interesting, we were just looking at a blog article that was talking about how we use events and, you know, a, a release event is information that would be useful when we're trying to diagnose a problem. So as a matter of fact, earlier this year, Dynatrace released a whole new set of capabilities around being able to define SLOs or service level objectives, and then using those SLOs to help drive better release management. You can use Dynatrace in combination with your uh, CI, CD, your pipeline tools so that you can better automate those pipelines and then keep an eye on those releases as you're, you know, as, as you are, you know, pushing new, <coughs> pardon me, pushing new capabilities out <laughs> into the wild oh pardon me folks <coughs> there we go so you know this is interesting because what it does is it basically allows you to understand which versions are deployed uh, across your different stages it allows you to basically get visibility into the release stages for those deployed versions it provides a change log for new versions and it that allows you to integrate in with you know, if you're using, say, um, you know, if you had more of a GitOps type approach, you could, uh, you know, hook this into your, uh, you know, change log. You could tie this into, um, you know, known bugs related to those releases. You could understand which version is taking too much load, as an example, if you're doing like a canary deployment. And it allows you to compare how one version compares to another. Now, this is totally automated in from the Dynatrace perspective. This release monitoring will automatically start showing up so long as you provide details of the actual release version within your application. And so as an example, what we've got here is if I was running Linux, it's really simple to add this. You just simply run this these commands here where we're replacing the version with your version numbers. So here I'm basically just exporting the DT underscore release version. And uh, this is what the command would look like. You simply do that and then Dynatrace will automatically pick up that release information as part of your build and start showing it in the actual UI like this. So if you didn't know that, now you do. And that is Dynatrace does do release management. So the, the last thing I want to mention on uh, this week's uh, Did You Know? And that is, did you know that coming up February 13th to 16th is Dynatrace Perform in Las Vegas? This is our annual user conference, and we are looking forward to seeing everyone attend this year live, in person, in Vegas. Now, the best thing about Perform, one of the best things about Perform is uh, the hands-on training sessions. And, and so I always make this pitch. If you are planning to attend the Perform Conference, sign up for the hands-on training. Sign up early because those classes, they fill up. And they are, every year we just get so many good reviews about these hands-on training sessions. People get so much value. You literally are taking, you know, um, you know uh, hands-on, uh, exercises where you are using Dynatrace to solve a specific issue or address a particular concern. And that could be anything from uh, how to use Dynatrace to drive automation to how do we use this new query language, DQL, to um, you know, uh, be able to create you know, better analytics and queries. So uh, folks, if you're not aware of it, Dynatrace Perform, 
Las Vegas at the uh, Cosmopolitan Hotel, February 13th through 16th. Uh, if you haven't signed up, you know, and you're thinking about it, now's the time to do that. And with that, folks, we're going to turn things over to Ricardo. So that's that's the end of uh, you know my intro here. And Ricardo, we're going to uh, pass things over to you. Sure. And uh, let's let's get started with the demo. Now, folks, uh, you know, as I mentioned at the very beginning, what makes these sessions so valuable and so useful are your questions. So please feel free to ask your questions. If we can answer them, we'll we'll do our very best. And we don't know the answers, we'll go off and try to find the answers and, and get those back to you. So with that, over to you, Ricardo. OK, great. Thanks, jun -Zi. OK, so yeah, before going into the demo, can you see my screen now? Or uh, maybe uh, like not the yet. Now we oh, can. There, there we, we go. go. OK, perfect. Um, before we start, let me tell you a little bit about myself. So um, I'm, uh, I'm down here based in Mexico City. And uh, I have been in Dynatrace for two and a half years, two and a half years coming up. So I cover most of um, North Latin America, that being Mexico, from Tijuana all the way down to, to the southern state, to Chiapas. And I also cover Central America and like the northern part of the South America uh, section, you know, like Colombia, Venezuela, and that, uh, that little top. And um, well, as I said, I have, I have been here for around two years. And um, well, I, I really love working for Dynatrace. I mean, uh, uh, what I love most is that I have been able to see a whole bunch of different technologies and a whole bunch of mm -hmm. different customers doing um, uh, a bunch of new things. Like, for example, I don't know, I'm, I have working for I, I have been working like from mining companies all the way up to financial institutions, governments, uh, fintech, and all of that. So it has been uh, it has been truly truly amazing and. Um, and well, one thing that I do a lot uh, in, in Latin America is do uh, demos and, and talk to customers. So let's uh, let's try doing a little bit of that here. Yeah, so, absolutely. Hey, hey, Ricardo, before you get into the demo, let, you've been here two years. Let me ask you this question. In those two years, what was the most interesting feedback that you got from a customer about Dynatrace? Ah, well, you on the spot. A, yeah, that's a great question. I, I've, I've had a lot of amazing feedback. Um, the feedback that... I, most of what I do is do proof of concepts. So the greatest feedback that I can get from a customer after I finish a proof of concept is, can you leave Dynatrace on for me? Because you know <laughs> proof of concepts are, are limited. So can you just leave it on like uh, for, for a couple more weeks? Uh, I mean, for me, that that's, that's amazing. That's fabulous. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It, it shows value. Yeah, so definitely that, that's the best. And other than that, I have received a lot of... Uh, uh, comments like you know what we had we were able to find uh, a query that was taking way too long uh, we, we were not able to see that uh, we were able to see problems we didn't even know we have we had uh, I had a customer they were migrating their uh, they were migrating to a new system and, uh, and and they actually thanked us because after we did a POC they, they saw that they have some uh, some process and some applications that had been idle for like two years and they, they were consuming resources and they were doing uh, whatever they were doing. And, uh, and, and they, it, it just wasn't under the, the radar. They, they just didn't have the, uh, the necessary visibility to go into that. So, so yeah, it's, it's great to get those feedback and to, to get to, uh, to help the customers. Fabulous, that's great. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So moving on to the demo. Mm -hmm. So um, normally when, when I talk to, to customers or, or I do the, the, the demo, I like to start by saying, what is Dynatrace? So basically, Dynatrace is a tool that is going to help you make your applications run correctly. So that, that that's basically it. And what does that mean? It means that Dynatrace is going to monitor everything, all, all the way from uh, the upper layers, like where are your customers interacting? How, how is the, uh, the interaction with your application working? I mean, are they satisfied? Are the clicks working correctly? Are the touches on the mobile working correctly, etc.? And we also monitor the lower layers, like how is my, is my server uh, doing? Uh, is my RAM consumption uh, going well? Uh, is my server, I don't know, having CPU problems? How are my processes? How are my uh, database queries working, etc.? So we have those two layers, and we kind of monitor all of that and everything that's in between. And you know that in between, we're going to have a whole bunch of things. We're going to have processes. We're going to have network metrics. We're going to have... Um, service calls between uh, different uh, uh, between different endpoints. There's a lot to see there. 
So with Dynatrace, you're going, you're going to be able to monitor all of that, like the, the full stack. So um, with that in mind, um, uh, that's my definition of Dynatrace. So let, let's start seeing how Dynatrace works. So the first thing is all of these menus, the all, all of the um, sections that I'm, I'm showing to you right now, is the same that every customer is going to have, uh, regardless of where, where you are, what uh, technology you're monitoring, or whatever. You're, you're going to have this exact same uh, same interface. The only thing that's going to change is what I'm showing you right now. This is a dashboard, and it changes because dashboards are uh, tailored to specific uh, to specific users. So you can build your own dashboard. Maybe you can have like a very deep technical dashboard, or you can have um, a, like a more executive dashboard like this one. Like uh, you have your little honeycombs here that they tell you when you have a problem in your services, or they tell you when you have a problem in your hosts, or um, uh, I don't know, they, they, it just gives you an executive, executive view, which actually, actually brings me to another point about Dynatrace. Dynatrace is not a solution that is uh, fitted only for like the tech guys, you know, for like engineering for, or for like IT or for um, just for those guys. But there are actually other areas within companies and organizations that can get a lot of uh, uh, value from Dynatrace. For example, you can see, uh, you, 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 you could see uh, business information, I don't know, uh, marketing information, where are my uses, users coming from, uh, where are they connecting to, uh, to my application, and a whole bunch of information that, that, that really provides value to other areas uh, within the company. So um, as I was telling, this dashboard is uh, completely customizable. So uh, when I normally talk about Dynatrace, um, I, I, we can start from the top to the bottom, like from the application and work our way down to the infrastructure, or from the infrastructure and, and work our way up to the, to the application. So let's go with the first option today. Uh, let's start work seeing uh, our applications. And then we can start seeing how that connects to the back end and how that connects to our infrastructure and everything. OK, so as I was saying, this dashboard can be completely customizable. And let's go into seeing how would an application look like uh, within Dynatrace. So for that, as I said before, all of these options, uh, they are completely, uh, th these are the same for all users. So if you download a free trial today or you have Dynatrace today, you're going to have the, the, same, the same options. So if you want to see an application, uh, let's go here in applications and microservices to the front end portion. And here in front end, I have the summary of all of my applications. Maybe some are mobile applications, maybe some are uh, web applications, uh, but this is basically where my customers are, uh, are interacting. So we can go into anyone. Let's pick one, whatever, this one. So here I have an easy travel application. And this application is um, is a web application. We can see everything. And you see these little box diagrams that are uh, all around. Um, this is actually a structure that you're going to be seeing in a lot of places in Dynatrace. It tells you basically what you're analyzing. In this case, this is an application. So it gives me my application metrics. But it tells you on the left who is talking to the application. In this case, well, we have 53% of Chrome users. Of those Chrome users, I can actually do a breakdown of, of, of who is interacting here. So I can see that most of my users are coming in from a desktop. And from those, a lot of are coming from Chrome. We also have some users from Edge, Firefox, et cetera. Et cetera. So basically, it's telling me who is talking to my, my application. Now, one thing that I really like is that we can do a breakdown uh, by location of who is entering our, our application. And this adds a very interesting, uh, let's call it a very interesting dimension to, who, to the analysis that I can make for my, for my application. Because now I can pull metrics like, um, I don't know, how are my users in Europe perceiving my application? Or are my users in Asia or in Ireland or wherever? Are they experiencing problems? Are they having um, a, a, a poor experience with my application? Or maybe some other things like, where are my users from, I don't know, from Germany interacting with my, uh, with my applications? Um, are they going into a very specific part of my application? Or are they just not going into one, one part of my application, whatever? So I can start doing this kind of analytics and this uh, kind of uh, information uh, breakdown. Uh, with the, with this geolocation uh, breakdown, okay? So now, if we're talking about the application itself, 
it uh, it tells you it tells you how your application is behaving, and you will see a bunch of very inter interesting uh, metrics here. So, for example, here it it's telling me how the load actions are behaving, how my XR, XA, XHR actions are behaving, etc. Um, there's a very interesting metric here, which is called the Abdex. I don't know uh, if everyone knows uh, about the Abdex, but the Abdex is basically um, um, a score from zero to one that tells me how my how my users are perceiving my application. Of course, we always want to aim for one, but uh, of course, we have seen applications that have a an Abdex of 0.5, an Abdex of 0.6, something like that. In this case, we have an excellent Abdex. We normally want to stay about 0.85. So in this case, it's good. Uh, I can assume that my users are having mostly a, a good experience with my, with my application. And we can see the errors that we have. Now, there's a whole bunch of metrics, as I was saying before. And maybe these metrics make sense to different, um, uh, different areas or different people within the company. For example, you can see here uh, the user action duration, dura duration, how is the response time of my website? And there's a section that I really like here that it tells you all of the metrics and the response time. So for example, a really important one is this one, the visually complete. So uh, how fast are users perceiving my application as being, uh, or, or my site or, or whatever we're measuring, how fast are they perceiving it to be, um, to be complete? So 0.69 seconds, that's perfect. Anything about above uh, three seconds, you're probably going to start having a little bit of uh, bad experiences. So uh, we, we have this, uh, these metrics all around here. Um, yeah, so it looks like we've got a, a question coming in from uh, Kevin Schultz. What would you say is the biggest differentiator for Dynatrace? Oh, well, so, that's actually, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Uh, no, uh, Ricardo, I'll let you take a stab at it, and then I'll take a stab at it. So what do you okay. think? What do you think is the biggest differentiator for Dynatrace? Okay. You know, there, there's a couple, and I don't know which, which is the biggest one. I guess the biggest one depends on the customer and what you're doing. But for me, and this is a feedback that I have gotten from a lot of customers, is just how easy it is to set up and start seeing information. I mean, everything that I have been showing so far, we could start seeing this information in a couple of hours. I mean, just, just deploying Dynatrace and getting to work. Um, I, I have been personally in deployments, in complex deployments, where in two hours we have and a, a, a really good uh, deployment working and some really good information uh, coming in. So for me, that, that's one of the uh, of the greatest differentiators for Dynatrace. And I don't know, what about you, Yossi? What do you think? Well, I, no, I, I, I do agree with you. The, uh, the ease of deployment for Dynatrace is uh, a, certainly a, a substantial differentiator. So uh, Dy Dynatrace, you know, ultimately is like getting observability in a box. And, you know, simply by signing up for even something like our free trial, all you have to do is download the agent and deploy the agent on a couple of servers. And it's just automatically going to start sending telemetry back to us. And so this visibility that Ricardo is showing us right now, 100%, it just is immediately going to start working with very, very, very little effort. Just to, to illustrate Ricardo's point. Um, we had a um, we had an airline uh, in 2018. This airline was able to uh, deploy Dynatrace out across 28 of their most critical applications. It took them less than three months to do that. A year later, a year later, we had a um, a bank here in Canada, and they were able to deploy Dynatrace out onto uh, around. Uh, 800 servers and wow. deploy it across, I think it was something in the neighborhood of like 19,000 processes that they identified with and identified about 2,100 services. That took them a week and a half. And then a couple of years ago, we had a big insurance company uh, down in the uh, United States that was able to deploy Dynatrace across... Um, it, this was a ridiculous number. It was like 18,000 hosts, and they wow. identified over 200,000 processes and containers, and it took them three hours to do that. So wow. that 
massive time to value is something that 100% differentiates Dynatrace from everything else. The yeah. second, and, and it's like, okay, that's huge. That's huge <laughs> in and of itself. But then yeah. what Dynatrace does by providing that complete end-to-end -end picture, being able to literally go from, hi, I'm a user and I'm doing something in a browser and being able to see what that user is doing in that browser and then trace that transaction all the way back across every tier, everything from the web server, so your web tier, your app tier, your messaging tier, your backend tier, your database, if you've got a mainframe, being able to tie all of that together is just something, again, that just massively differentiates Dynatrace. And now with this new Grail technology, I'm going yeah. to say that, you know, we ex we fully expect that what we're going to do to change and completely change, um, you know, how people, uh, you know, are, are monitoring their logs, um, that is going to be another, you know, decided differentiator. So that's a great question, Kevin. Thank you very much for that question. And, and, okay, Ricardo, let, let's get back into the demo. Sure. Yeah, thanks a lot. That, that was actually a, a, a great question and a very interesting one. So, so yeah. Anyway, as I was saying, so we're monitoring the our application and we're seeing a whole bunch of metrics. We're seeing a lot of uh, information coming in. Uh, but when monitoring applications, you also want to be uh, proactive and you want to see um, if my application is having like problems in response times or maybe just even if it's down. And it, it, it sounds like it would be easy, but you would be surprised how many customers do not monitor their availability. So for that, we can actually create synthetic monitors. A synthetic monitor is kind of like a, a we call it a little robot that just uh, uh, goes through a flow within your site, or or maybe simply just uh, is just uh, constantly loading up your uh, your application and seeing if it's available. In this case, for example, we have two monitors running from three locations, and we see a little uh, red portion here. That means that a monitor could not contact the application, but that does not really a problem. I mean. It was one monitor from one location. If, it, if I had like two synthetic monitors down, then I have a problem. So here we measure the, um, the availability. And something really, really interesting here is that all of the actions of my users that come into my application, uh, the, the Dynatrace analyzes those actions. So we can see that we can look at them globally. So for example, in here, we have the top three user actions. But let's go into the full details and see what are my users doing on my application. So first of all, we have a lot of metrics here about uh, uh, user times, about low, load actions, etc. But what I really like about this section is that it tells you all of the actions that my users are doing within the application. So for example, they loaded the main page here, and we can see the duration. Actually, let's go into this one. And now we are able to see this particular action on, on my on my website, and we can see the user interaction, the the, the user action direction uh, time that it's two point four seconds. And in here, something interesting: I have no errors, but you see the updates is a little bit lower than the overall updates of my application, which means that this particular action has something that is probably uh, keeping my updates uh, a little bit uh, below. I mean, it's not bad; it's definitely good. It's it's there right there, the, the little smiley face. But uh, something is, uh, is is lowering my updates a little bit. We have seen cases where the overall application is good. It's around 0 0.8, 0 0.85. But there are some specific um, sections of the uh, of, of my site that are, that are getting uh, a little bit uh, a little bit of a lower score. Now, another interesting thing here is that we have the what we call the waterfall analysis. So in the waterfall analysis, what we're going to see is this particular um, action or this particular section of my of my web page is we can see all of what it's loading uh, behind scenes. So uh, we can see here that it's loading a Facebook button. We can see it's loading a, a banner, uh, some stuff. And we can see there are some errors. So now we can go into each section of the page and seeing all of the errors that I uh, that I have now, uh, and I, I actually have a an interesting story about this. A couple of weeks ago, we were going well, actually a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months ago, 
we were doing a POC with a, with a customer here in, in Mexico. And this customer was, uh, well, they sell fast food. So they have like uh, burgers and chicken and all of that. And something that we found, and it, it's funny, but because nobody saw it, but one of their products, I think, I think it was like a burger or something, it wasn't loading properly. I mean, uh, if you go, if you went into the menu, the menu wasn't uh, wasn't displaying that particular item. So the sales for that particular product were on the ground. I mean, nobody was buying it. So we just went in and and, and we saw that for like eighty percent or ninety percent of, of all the users that went into the into that site, um, they they did not have. Uh, they did not see. They just didn't see the hamburger. So I guess they didn't see it. It, it, it didn't trigger any craving on them. So the sales were very low. We we saw that problem. The customer corrected it, and uh, after they corrected it, we saw the sales for that specific product go way up. So Dynatrace is a tool that really helps you kind of uh, find those uh, those little problems and those little uh, things that may go unnoticed and and that may actually impact your business when you are. Um, uh, I mean, when, when you're on retail or when you are or when you're selling anything, those little kind of those, those little problems are, are are really going going to impact you. And maybe not every time you will have the visibility uh, or, or or just the capacity to to see them. Okay. So uh, in in this, we are seeing that you can see all of the elements uh, behind the, a specific user action. Now I'm going to go back to my application here. If you see here on the top, you can see all of the. Uh, sections that I, I, I have been browsing. And now, as I was saying, here we are seeing who's talking to the application, then the application itself, and now who is the application talking to? So this application in particular, we can see that it's talking to third parties. We can see that it's talking to Amazon, it's talking to open weather or whatever. So uh, maybe you have a problem in your application, but maybe not. it's not actually your problem. It could be a third party. Uh, so that's that's something important and something to look out for. And also something very important is how is my application connecting to the to the backend? Actually, you know what? Before I go into into that section, before we start diving into into the the backend, uh, let's see about the user sessions. We saw how we can see the application as a whole, like uh, in general, but we can actually go a little bit more granular and start seeing. Uh, my specific users and how they are behaving. So let's go into here. And this will actually come up with a whole list of users and what they are doing. First thing to note here is that you will have some users as anonymous. This is because uh, they still do not ha uh, have typed their name or Dynatrace do not, not, does not know their name. But Dynatrace can pull the name of the users from a set of sources. We can, if, if it's somewhere on the site, we can pull it from the site. Uh, or, or we can pull it from a request attribute. I'll, I'm going to talk about that in, in a few minutes. But let's go into a user that is actually um, identified. For example, here, Tanak. Tanak is live. That means that the session is uh, still ongoing. So you know what? Let's let's go to a session that is, 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 not, um, is not live. Here, if I click here, I have like a very powerful filter where I can see, for example, filter by operating system, I can filter by country, by city. There's a there's a whole bunch of options here, but actually, let's go to a session that is not live just to show you how the, the filter works. Non-live um, users, and I don't know. Let's go into Johanna. Oh, so it looks like Johanna has no information. You know what? Let's go here. I have another section called uh, digital experience, and let's go into the session segmentation section. This tells me the whole users that I have. Here in the top uh, right corner, I have my time selector. So in this time selector, I can select um, the time where I, where I want my analysis to be done. So let's pick, for example, the last six hours. I had it for the last three days. Maybe that's a lot. So in the last six hours, we have this uh, this couple of users. So now let's go, for example, here into, into this user. Taking a little, a little bit slow. <clears throat> Let's pick another one. Uh, we said we didn't need live, so let me move this a little bit. And we don't want live users. I 
and we can see Maria here. While it loads, let me show you a little something else. So let's go back here to the front end. And we were looking at this application. So while that loads, let me show you how this actually connects to the, to the back end. So here we have our two services. Now, what you were seeing before, how we map the entire, um, the entire span of my application, I can see that here on the, on the service flow. And this service flow, this is actually very, very uh, interesting because you can see here that it maps all of the elements from where it started, like for example, uh, where my users are clicking and what that is triggering uh, all the way to the back end. So I can see that this application, which is uh, www.easytravel.com, it's triggering uh, these two uh, services. And then these two services come all the way here and they start talking to a whole other bunch of services. They talk to a couple of queues, they talk to databases, and they talk to a whole bunch of um, uh, sections of, of my backend. So I can just go in here and stand in any one of these um, of these services and see what's going on here. In case there it, is a problem. Hold, hold on, Ricardo. So this map that you're showing us, this service flow map, is this something that I have to configure or is it just discovered? No, actually, that's a very good question. It's just completely discovered. This is um, this is discovered based on the transactions that come up from your application. So you don't have to actually tell anything uh, to Dynatrace. And you know that, that that's actually also uh, a good point because um, I was showing this to a customer and he was saying, that's great. Can I export that to my CMDB? Because I have no idea about the topology of my applications. So so yeah, and, and the answer actually is yes, you can you can export all of this information. I'll show you the smart case, smart scape in a second. Um, you can export all of this to whatever you want. So yeah, that's that's definitely it. If tomorrow, let's say this customer decided to uh, add, I don't know, an Nginx service here, you would have Nginx appear here in just a couple of minutes. In case there are transactions, you will see them here. So yeah, it's uh, it's great and it's completely automatic. You don't have to upload any topology files or tell Dynatrace uh, to use a specific tag or anything. This is completely, completely automated. Very cool, very cool. Sorry, sorry, I, I, I threw that question at you. So fire away, keep, oh, going. No, keep going. going, thank you. Sure, okay. So uh, as we were saying, you can just see this, uh, this whole service flow and I can just click and step on any one of these um, on these steps. So, for example, I don't know. Let's uh, let's go here. So, here I have a Tomcat service. Uh, I have all of the information of the well, the kind of general information about the service here. Um, the average response time, how many requests are going through here, uh, the requests or the calls that are going to to other services, and Dynatrace can also tell me what are the infrastructure components for this uh, particular service. So, in in this case, well, we have. Um, this service that is running on this server, on this server, and on this server. So now I have also infrastructure um, information. Now, uh, also something very important is that once I step here, I can just click here, and this will tell, take me into what we call the distributed traces, which is part of the PurePath technology by, by Dynatrace, uh, just right here, PurePath. And basically, a pure path is uh, the technology that we use to map and to get code level visibility for all of my transactions. So basically, what Dynatrace is doing is that it's adding a little header to all of my transactions. And then we can track that way. Uh, we can track them through all of the steps and all of the services and wherever my transactions are, are going to. So in here, we have the, uh, the different traces or the different uh, uh, the different requests that we're going through through, through this um, um, through this specific uh, service. So there is one particular that I have that I like here. So I think it's calculate. Here we go. There's a little filter here, so I can look for a very specific request. So let's say you're doing some troubleshooting. You can just go here and see uh, the particular request that you you want to look into. So in this case, I just typed, like, uh, I went to look for this. I just typed a little bit of the word and I can see here. So let's go into whatever. Let's pick one random. Uh, I don't know, this one. So what this is going to do is that it's going to show me the trace of these requests 
and everything that it was uh, talking to and everything that it was doing uh, all the way down to code level. So in here, I have the calculate recommendations request. And here I have kind of all the information. So this is working in this uh, service. Um, this is the request that, uh, that I'm looking into. This is the host. Um, something very interesting is this is the user action. So a user did this action and this triggered this request uh, on the back end. Um, here we have some request attributes. I'm going to tell you about request attributes in a, in a few seconds. And here we have the information that we're pulling from this request. So there's a lot of information that, that we can see here. But what I like the most about this, um, this trace view is that it can tell you step by step how it's interacting with different services. So for example, it talked to a Tomcat, then it went and talked to an Nginx, then it did a whole bunch of things all the way down to a database. And uh, well, there's a whole bunch of stuff that it was doing. So let's say that um, maybe you had a problem with a specific request. You can just come into this screen. And once you're in the screen, you will see this time breakdown. Uh, and this time breakdown can tell you who was the service that is taking the most time or that is uh, contributing to a very specific problem or just, just to know what's going on. Uh, we can also hear, see here, for example, if you are talking to third parties or if you're talking to maybe an unmonitored host or, or whatever. So uh, we, we see all, this, all of that information here and uh, we can see the timing. The timing is very important in this, uh, in this screen. And we can also go into code level well, we can see the timing of the of the request, and we can go into code level and see all of the methods, methods and classes that uh, that were running for this particular uh, for this particular request. So this gives you very very high uh, visibility on this. If we were to have an error or to have a problem, we would see this uh, this little section of the page light up in red. So we will be we would be able to see the the errors, and we can actually relate this to logs in case there are logs related to this uh, to this specific call. Uh, we would be able to, to see them here. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my application. Actually, we were on the on the service flow. So in this case, what we're seeing is that we're seeing different services, but we're seeing it in the context of one application. So Maybe I don't want to see it in the context of one application. I just want to see all of the services that are in my uh, in my environment, all, all of the services in, that I have monitored. So for that, there is also here in the section of application and microservices, I can just go into the services list. And once I'm here on the, on the services list, I will be able to see all of the services that have been detected by Dynatrace. In this case, I have 329 services, so, so that's a lot. Now, all of these columns, I'm going to just filter here to see which is the service that are that is having the most traffic or the most requests? So I can just click here, click twice, so to sort it. So here we go. These are the services that have the most transactions. So for example, I have this one that I, that is taking seven thousand seven hundred approximately requests per second. I have requests to unmonitor hosts. Uh, this is important because it tells you which hosts I could add, potentially add uh, a Dynatrace agent to, or uh, just, just to see if, if it's uh, outside of my scope of monitoring or I don't know. But we will be able to track those requests that are going to, uh, I like to call it like the unknown. Uh, those requests are tracked. Now let's pick one of the services. I think this, this was another service. This one was the one we were looking at, I think. And once I go into this service, uh, now, the important thing here is that I'm not seeing it in the context of the application, but I'm actually seeing it like globally. How is the service behaving? What it's doing? What's going on? So once again, we have our little boxes here and we see, okay, so these services, we have two applications talking to it, which is rental cars and being where is it traveling. We also have requests coming in from a network line. They're going through a proxy. And we see the service itself, which is handling 2,000 requests per, per minute. And then this service is talking to another four services. So we kind of have like a, uh, an idea of what the service is doing. We can actually also see the service flow. So the service flow, you see how it changes completely. Uh, before, we were seeing it in the context of, the, of one particular application. But now we are seeing it uh, just from the service 
and how it's talking to different points. So it changes completely. Um, this is uh, this is completely automated, discovered by Dynatrace. So now, now we have a, a completely different um, service flow. So let's go back. And now let's start seeing all of the requests of, uh, from this service. So I can just click here on view dynamic requests. And what this is going to do is that it's going to show me all of the requests going through this service. So we have the calculate recommendations that we were seeing earlier. We have uh, this uh, transaction that is probably related to, to payment. So that's a transaction that I really want to monitor. So uh, that's why it's here on my key requests. I can actually tell Dynatrace, you know what, this is a key request. Hey, let's pay special attention to it. And now you see all these little tags that I have on these uh, different requests. This is what we call a request attribute. So what is a request attribute? A request attribute is basically when we go into this request and we pull information from it. So what kind of information can we pull? Well, let's see here. So we can see, for example, this demo simulates being kind of a travel agency. So we can see, for example, where is the destination? Uh, we can see the session ID, client IP, uh, username, uh, destination, etc. There, there's a lot of information that we can pull from the request. And, and we can use this information to, once again, do some, some analytics. So for example, we could tell uh, in this particular scenario, we could tell you, I don't know, how many customers uh, looked into going to Paris for, um, uh, for, for the holidays and how much money that may have represented, uh, how much of that money was lost, I mean, lost, uh, uh, or, or, or how, actually how many money was lost because of, uh, I don't know, um, a purchase that wasn't completed, or maybe even because of an outage or a problem, we can actually go in and give you that, that kind of uh, that kind of information. And we can also go into each one of the re these uh, requests and tell you how they are, um, how they're behaving and, and how they're working. Because in here, you can see this graphic and this graphic tells you the overall of the, of the service and, and, and the requests that are going through it. But now we can go into one very specific, like for example, this one. And once we go into this one, we can, now you see there's no, there's the, the, the list went away. So now we have, just one request, and we're seeing how the request was uh, was behaving. So uh, we can just start doing analysis on this particular request. Like for example, I can see where is this request coming from. I'm going to open it on another another tab, and the traces which we already saw. So we can see this uh, the uh, this particular request was coming from uh, an application and calling and being called from well somewhere unknown which means we can either add an agent or do something uh, to get that uh, that monitoring working. So that's that's something special. Of, well, that's something I like about Dynatrace that it will tell you where you need to, to monitor a little more. So let me go back. And now let's start diving in uh, into our, um, let's call it into the infrastructure. We, we, we just saw the application, we saw the services, now let's go into the um, the infrastructure. I see a little question. Yeah, we got a question here from uh, Janik. So uh, Janik saying he's got uh, customers sending all kinds of logs, application infrastructure logs into Elk. And I'd like to enable log monitoring 2.0. So, you know, this is actually, you know, what are they saying here? 90, 90 gig a day is being used in uh, as disk capacity. So this is okay. So, you know, the this is actually an ent interesting question. And the timing is perfect because, you know, obviously we're having a lot of conversations around this new um, um, storage mechanism, which is part of the Dynatrace platform called Grail. Now, Grail, one of the first things that it's going to be applied to is um, is very much uh, around log monitoring and business events. And from the log monitoring standpoint, uh, there's a lot of really compelling reasons why you would uh, consider using Dynatrace's uh, new log monitoring powered by Grail. Uh, first is, uh, you know, by the end of the year, uh, when it comes to ingesting data, uh, we will be uh, at a point where, we'll, you know, easily be in, you know, 90 gigabytes of uh, data ingest is something that we'll be able to do very easily. Um, yeah. Our target for Grail is uh, we expect that, uh, you know, 
in the future, customers will be ingesting petabytes of data <laughs> u- utilizing Grail. So with Grail, uh, there are a whole slew of very advanced features related to um, how you want to, uh, you know, process the logs once they've been ingested, the ability for you to create metrics out of those logs, the ability for you to, um, you know, uh, create uh, and analyze events that are being generated out of those logs. And then on top of that, um, we've added a brand new query language that we call DQL. So let's just put it to you this way. If you're, you know, right now uh, ingesting logs into something like Elk, uh, you've probably got somebody on staff that knows how to use regex as an example. Mm -hmm. And if anyone here listening has actually ever used regex to create a query, uh, you you know that this is a um, uh, not necessarily an easy thing. And so we've took a long, hard look at what it takes to um, you know, to uh, get a lot of value out of the logs. And we realized that the way in which people query logs is, you know, the state of the art can be better. And, and so that's why we've created this new query language that allows us to take advantage of the massive parallel processing that our new log storage uh, capability provides. This will allow you to, uh, and, and, you know, Ricardo's showing us an example right now. This will allow you to create uh, on the fly queries that preclude you from having to do complex indexing before you put that data into your, you know, into your log storage system. This, uh, yeah, no, exactly. Regex is too complicated. Yeah. And in this particular scenario, um, this DQL is a very powerful language that allows us to do on the fly parsing of the data. Uh, and when you look at this, it's um, to be to be fair, it's human readable. You can look at a DQL query and understand very very quickly what that query is attempting to do. And so we expect that this query language, which right now is being applied to business events and logs, in the future, as more and more types of data are going to be stored within Dynatrace, you'll be able to create queries that are not only looking at data which is in the logs but remember ricardo was showing us data that was also in the um you know within the you know ultimately the pure paths within the spans and the traces and so eventually that information will also be stored within grail and then eventually you'll be able to query that information just like you query the logs and combine queries because sometimes there can be transactions that get executed but there's no log that's necessarily being generated from that transaction. So you're missing that when there are things that are happening. And so Dynatrace's, you know, approach is, you know, this, this grail technology is going to ultimately change the game. Even when it comes down to things like, for example, we're totally changing the paradigm around uh, log storage. For example, the current state of the art, typically you've got your hot storage You've got your cold storage, and then usually you put stuff up in like uh, your your glacier and your Amazon S3 glacier. And so we're doing away with that. With Dynatrace moving forward with this Grail powered log monitoring, you'll be able to effectively access all of the data as if it was hot stored. So there's no dip, you know, no tiered storage model moving forward. And if you want to store data, you know, for longer periods of time, you can absolutely do that. You can store data for 35 days, up to a year, up to three years, all of it hot accessible, meaning that you could run a query, not have to actually, uh, you know, rehydrate that data. And so, uh, you know, so will the logs be stored in a data lake? It's actually, you know, the way that we describe it is that Grail itself becomes a data lake house. So... Mm -hmm. You'll be able to store that data there for long periods of time, but then you'll be able to access it programmatically if need be. As a matter of fact, I'm going to hint at stuff that we're going to talk about and announce later on. And so I I can't steal any of our thunders, but let's just say now that we have this new model of being able to store data and being able to query it in a revolutionary fashion, uh, we uh, we we are going to be 
leveraging this considerably moving forward. And you'll mm -hmm. see new capabilities that are going to be built on top of this. And we'll be announcing those, as a matter of fact, at our Perform conference. So yeah. I, that was a great question. Thank you very much, Janik, for that. Uh, Ricardo, listen, we got uh, we got about five minutes left. Um, yeah. Any any last things that you want to show us? I'm sure. Let just to, to finish the flow. Let me show you how the infrastructure works, and maybe show uh, just a problem how how it looks. So um, just to wrap up. So we we're seeing uh, this specific service, and we can just drill down all the way to the infrastructure. So. This service is actually enabled by this process. And I can see here just the infrastructure metrics where I can see how it's behaving in terms of network traffic, um, how, CPU, how much CPU, uh, how much memory it's consuming. And then I can see that this process lives on this server. So in this server, we can see, we can just go down and see how are the CPU metrics, memory metrics. Actually, let me just click here so we can see the the exact detail, and then we can see everything, like uh, how much CPU is one specific process consuming, how much memory, how much traffic, etc. So uh, uh, that, that's kind of um, all of the uh, kind of like the visibility that Dynatrix give you, all the way from um, uh, from my applications all the way down to the uh, to the infrastructure. Now let's go oh, back here. Yeah, we've got all the questions coming in now. So we've got uh, uh, Feroz. You're asking uh, what's the slowest ten and slowest fifteen percent, you know, in this scenario. So you know, typically when we're looking at a, um, if we're looking at a service and we're looking at the service requests, what you can do is you can very, very, very quickly just be able to you know click on a couple of buttons, and typically that's going to show us and automatically filter out what are the um, you know slowest 10%, what are the slowest 5%. So the idea is that it just looks at um, and is a filter for, for us be, to be able to aggregate things. Uh, you know, in, in this particular case, um, if you're familiar working with things like percentiles, as an example, uh, this is just, you know, it, it sort of is based upon that. So I could sit there and say, okay, for this particular service, what's the average response time, um, you know, for the slowest 10%. And then it, it's here, you can see we're, we're actually sorting on that. Mm -hmm. So we got, we got a couple more minutes, uh, Ricardo, very quickly, last thing that you want to show today. Okay. Last thing. So let me show you just how the programs are seen in Dynatrix. So what Dynatrix is going to try to do is to give you the root cause of whatever problem you have. Let me just sort here the, the time. And you can just look for infrastructure problems or services problems or, or whatever. So let me show you how a problem would look. I actually have a problem here that I, uh, uh, I, I found. And it's interesting because, first of all, Dynatrix is going to tell you what is the impact of the problem and what is the impact to your business of the problem. So for example, here we had 900 potentially affected customers. We had 3 million of affected service calls. And it tells you here what was the problem. So um, the response time exceeded the out of a detected baseline by 230%. So that's a lot. And it happened for two applications. And Dynatrix will give me the root cause here. So the root cause was a problem in the check destination service. Um, it was because of two CPU saturation events. We can actually go in and see that uh, saturation on, on the CPU of the, of the servers. Here we can see the, the graph, and we can actually see all of the, of the processes here. And we can see, oh, sorry. We can see all of the processes that we're contributing here. And we can see that this was potentially caused by a new deployment, which it actually, what you were uh, saying uh, earlier in the call, it would, tell, it would tell me who was the owner, who did the approval, and everything. This, this, is, got, this is done through an integration with, with service now. So with this, we have very deep information on the problems. And this kind of view just saved me like, uh, I don't know, a couple of hours of, of troubleshooting. And this is amazing. And actually here, we have kind of like the, the recollection of the play. So we can see exactly when the problem started and how it was propagated. Here we can see all of the metrics of everything that was impacted. So this is kind of, if I'm a support engineer, this is, well, my job is done because I have all of the elements already uh, analyzed, and I can see the, the exact things that happened on the 
uh, on the problem. So yeah, that's uh, that basically it. That what, what I wanted to show you guys Average. today. Well, right on. Well, hey, listen, folks, we're at the uh, we're at the top of the hour, and uh, Ricardo, thank you very much for that demo. I, you know, I love having uh, different SEs on every other week doing these demos because it just gives us a fresh look on on Dynatrace. Oh, oh, we're sneaking oh, in a question. Yeah. Will Grail use DDU or is it an add-on technology like SmartScape for PurePath? Actually, that's an interesting question, Naveed. Um, Dynatrace's Grail is an enabling technology. So it is at the core of what Dynatrace does. So when you know, moving forward after January of this year, everybody's going to have potential access to Grail. So it's not something that you have to sign up for. Uh, it's not something that's going to be uh, priced out separately or anything like that. The usage of you know storing the logs, ingesting the logs, querying the logs, that will consume DDUs, okay? Yeah. So the functionality that is based on top of Grail will use DDUs, but Grail is a piece, a part, an inherent part of Dynatrace moving forward. That was a great question to end up uh, end today's show on. Thank you very much for that, Naveed. So with that, Ricardo, thank you very much. And folks, as always, thank you very much for your questions. That's what makes these sessions so useful and so powerful. Um, again, I will throw out another plug for, remember, Dynatrace Perform is coming up in February. So, um, you know, go out and, uh, you know, make sure if you're coming, get signed up for those hands-on training days uh, beforehand. And then also, if you're brand new to Dynatrace, always go to dynatrace.com slash trial, and, and you can actually take Dynatrace out for a spin, and everything that Ricardo showed you today, you would be able to get access to. So with that, we're going to wrap things up. We'll see you in a couple more weeks for the next session of Getting to Know Dynatrace. And with that, again, Ricardo, thank you very much. And folks, thank you very much. Have a great yeah. day. Thank you, Bye.